Wake up guys, my name is Kyle. So how much would you say the studio's worth? 60 and 70,000 USD. USD, oh fuck. USD. Gonna do a little studio tour here, cause why not? It's content, you guys like content, right? <laughs> so these are the in-house CDJ setups. As you see here, the Nexus 2s, as well as the DJM 900 Nexus 2s, as well as vinyl. I don't DJ with the vinyl, cause I make electronic music and I DJ electronic music, so. Why would I use vinyl? These mimic your you booth monitor. You can be a real DJ then. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, eventually. One day. <laughs> I get my shit put on vinyl. And only like, real DJs use only, vinyl. Only real DJs <laughs> use vinyl. This is just button pushing, dude. So you know, you can you know play lots of p the movies uh, and look at pictures. Um, you know, on the CDJs as well as play music sometimes. And play RuneScape. Yeah, RuneScape as well. RuneScape is pretty dope. So some background music, don't copyright strike us, get her, please. Um, so yeah, like these, I'll turn off the booth monitors. And that's like, this like mimics like your festival setup. So right now all the studio monitors are. And then. Now we can turn that down and this is like your booth monitors. Next we got, uh, Assorted different things. Um, we got an actual analog sub fatty Moog. Uh, we got a lot of other analog synths. Um, you, they're all routed to the mixer over there. It's fun. It's awesome. It's really cool to uh, experiment on. Um, then we got like step sequencers and different things for making different rhythms. Like if you want to make like hip hop and whatnot. It's it's honestly it's cool. I love it. Got some Novation. Uh, got an uh, Novation synth. It's got really cool presets on it. I like it. Um, and same thing. Um, same thing as like, same idea as like an 808. Mm -hmm. It's got like presets on it. You can assign presets on it, blah, blah, blah. Sampler with an amp inside of it, by the looks of it. Yeah, this is actually something that you would use for, I think, performing. Other things we got, this is like a digital take on like an analog synth. It's cool. I personally don't use this one as much, but I have used it before. This is a Juno 106. Sounds awesome, sounds really cool if you want like, I don't know, almost like 70s or 80s sounding things, at least hmm. in my uh, in my time. Some like Vaporwave. Having... Yeah, 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 you know, like it's, it's cool. There's, they, they have, it still technically is like digital because they have like pre-saved things and, and whatnot. And then there's just like the same thing. This actually, this synth reminds me the most of, uh, a plugin I like to use sometimes for not heavy stuff called Nexus. It just, I don't know why, it just reminds me of ne Nexus. Uh, this section is really cool. Oh, actually, this is a, I think this is a, this is similar to like a talk box. Um, it's got like, it can produce the same sort of sounds as like, uh, like that Daft Punk vibe mm, of like vocal, mm. you know, like you can sort of like talk and then it's like a vocal, it's like an actual vocoder, um, which is just vocal processing software on the end. Mm -hmm. This is the Behringer X32 producer mixer. Um, it's got a really cool um, interface inside of it that can allow playback all the way up to 496 samples of buffering, which for me is good because I usually have like 18 instances of serum in some tracks and as we all know and love Serum, it uses a lot of CPU, mm -hmm. right? So that's cool. Uh, um, this is just amp stuff and also like power distribution. I don't use Ableton. However, I saw that um, Akai actually did a collaborative device with FL Studio that is almost exactly uh, like this one, except it's just a little more particular to the flow of FL Studio. This is basically like a launch pad as well as just MIDI. Like you can assign this MIDI to anything. So like, for example, if I had a, like a growl, like a bass growl, and for some reason I'd be like using something, some sort of project to like launch different clips and, and this and that, and I wanted to like automate the bass growl, I could like set the MIDI learn 
to change according to how I twist the knob. And like, while, for example, like this is cool if like you have the sound happening and obviously with dubstep, it's really dynamic and usually like loud and never the same every bar after, unless it's like a loop of something that changes usually, that's what I find. But this is my go-to, what I think like it's set up here just because it's like the go-to. Basically all you do is turn it on and set it to FL Studio. And now all the MIDI here is set to communicate with the program. And these are all adjustable and different settable MIDI uh, presets. Like again, same idea as with this one. I can change. I can assign up to eight different knobs, and I think like I can change like the sets of knobs. So like I can like set this to like one different synth plugin that I have, and then like I can press that button and change it. Um, yeah, there's also like record, play, stop feature. So like, all right, cool. Um, so now what are you up to? Just making music? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, just you know, hanging out with the bro. Love you, dude. Um, there's actually a bathroom too. So show off the bathroom. This is where the magic happens. You bring in any one of your friends that likes to talk or sing, oh, okay. and they can see exactly what you're doing. As well as these two microphones. This is um, this is the sh this is a Shure mic. So this is normally what I use for like when I'm um, recording vocals for like hip hop tunes and things for other people. Um, and then this is kind of like more, I would use like for samples. Um, so now there's almost no acoustic reverberation there. I mean like there's a little bit because of like, obviously the wood has a little bit of reverberation, but like this room is pretty good in terms of like sounding like you're in space. It doesn't, it doesn't really. It's so quiet. Yeah, it doesn't affect your signal at all. Plus you can't like, I could be, Listening in the other room with the doors closed to what um, the what what the person in here is saying and It would sound that like it wouldn't come through like they mm -hmm. wouldn't hear it, right? Uh, the only way that they would hear it would be through these headphones, which Fuck. I would set up obviously So it's like the ultimate Fortnite setup Never hear mom basically <laughs> moms never hear you have you know keyboard and mouse imagine immersive Fortnite in here immersive <laughs> Immersive for like I think you can even 360 there's audio like a, there's like a remote and this might work. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can make that shit RGB baby and turn off. Oh, that's the wrong so it's one. like Christmas vibe kind of. There you Whoa. go. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like I'm feeling sad. Make it sad purple. boys. Make it sad. Red. Oh, wait, what the fuck? That's not red. I'm gonna make it red because I'm an angry mother <laughs> fricker. <laughs> Yeah, but that's wow. cool. These lights look amazing. Yeah, I. this is why you need to come over to my place because, you know, I have all of, like, I stole a bunch of ideas from this. Actually. Mm -hmm. I, this is the only thing that I need to get in my room, though. I need to get a cloud. This is what we call it, a cloud. Cloud? Yeah. Cloud cloud. Because, like, right now, the cloud, or my, my ceiling is the only thing that's not, like, acoustically treated in some way. Mm, okay. And so, like, it'll, uh, ooh, actually, you know what? I'm going to turn everything off in here because that's just extra power that I don't need to be using. So how much would you say the studio's worth in total? Holy crap. Um, I'd say it's probably between 60 and 70,000 USD. USD? Yeah. Oh fuck. USD, yeah. What about CAD? <laughs> I'd say like, I'd, I'd probably say like it's at least $80,000. Nigerian dollars, it's like 30 billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So out of 12, what would you rate the studio? 21. 21? 